guys and welcome to David Christopher's channel and today we are going to be talking about wedding bouquets, uh, prom bouquets, things like that because I am making more and more of them as we get into May and I just thought it would be something different that we haven't done and I hate doing the same thing over and over again. So today we are going to be talking about bouquets and putting them together and trying to make them pretty easy for you to DIY these yourself. Do you want to hold one? Yes. Yeah. Smallish one. <laughs> My small bouquet. Yes. When I went to prom, we didn't do bouquets of flowers. We had like, we had this on our arm. We had a croissant. You had one that size yes, on your arm? Yes, it was the size that we had to n navigate all night long. Well, you, you are from Tennessee. That's a close 10 to Texas, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Big corsage on my arm. It was like a third wheel. <laughs> Some of you out there know what I'm talking about. You had corsages that were this big too. So now a lot of the, the ladies carry. A lot, of, a lot of the girls want bouquets now because they can carry it with their dress with their, mm -hmm. for their pictures. And then they can lay it down at their table and come back and pick it up after they're done dancing. Yes, done getting their dates face. Right. Yeah, that's a little awkward. <laughs> okay, so we are going to be talking about more of a wedding style. I'm going to make this fairly large because that's becoming more and more popular for brides bouquets right now. Uh, very large and flowing and, and wispy. So uh, we're actually going to use several different colors but shades of those colors that will help coordinate together so one thing i like to do is make sure i've got a couple of different foliages that look good in my uh, my flowers and especially to make these kind of flowy styles so silver dollar eucalyptus and then our uh, laurel leaf style eucalyptus that's fresh touch that's on both sides that's a good one for both case and we're going to mix this kind of an odd mauvey pink with some plums and then we're going to throw this uh what i kind of consider like a french blue uh that's got a little bit of this lavender tint into it we're going to mix that all together into one bouquet so you get a lot of different shades but in the end they're going to kind of blend together because we're going to tuck some of this darker plum down into the bouquet and it's going to work really well Remember that all the items you see in our video today can be found online at davidchristophers.com. We sell wholesale and retail. And if you check out the description box, as always, I will have a list of all of the items David is using, as well as the item numbers, so that when you go to the website, you can easily find the products. I didn't know this might be come back for there's a couple different options when you're putting bouquets together. The old traditional style was to floral tape uh, all of your items together with tape, and I still like to do that sometimes. I, I will uh, often uh, use floral tape just because it holds very well. Um, but I go through a lot of floral tape doing that, so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to make a bouquet. First thing I did was I actually cut my frame from my roses and then I go through and tend to separate these out. I will leave a couple of them alone like this because I can still use that and I want to leave some length to the roses. Uh, but I don't want all three together like this. So I'm going to cut the longest one right there so it leaves my other two intact and it gives me a pretty long stem to work with okay i'm also going to separate my hydrangeas here the seated hydrangea bouquet uh, these come as a set of three so i'm going to separate those out so that they're individual stems now that I have everything separated, I can kind of begin and really I'm going to start with my largest hydrangea 
and that's this plum. And while it's not really the focal color that I'm working on, it's going to be kind of tucked in more than the rest of them. I want to use it first and then I'm going to build around that. So if I am choosing to floral tape my bouquet here, uh, what I would do is I would take my floral tape and I'm going to wrap this uh, and just spin. And really, I'm just going to continue to add things, adding another hydrangea style. So I'm going to tuck this one just a little bit higher so that my plum is further down. And then I'm going to tape. And you'll notice I've got a little bit of an angle on my stem. That's the proper way to do it. Uh, everything should have a little bit of an angle when you place all of the stems. But with artificial flowers, it's a little bit less important because you can kind of move them around once you get done. We're just going to add and we're going to twist our floral tape on. Add another hydrangea on this side. Now, one thing that's important to remember is that usually this is the middle that you start with. So if you want to add things like this eucalyptus or other eucalyptus or anything else that really needs to be toward the center, you want to do that fairly early as you get started. So I'm going to take a couple of pieces of this eucalyptus off, and I can just pull the stems because this is paper wrapped. And that's going to give me just the stem with some wire on it, which makes it also a lot easier to use so that I can get some of that foliage toward the center of my bouquet here. So I'm going to go ahead and add my other hydrangea. I don't need the large leaf at the bottom. I may go back and add that at the end. But right now, I don't really need it. I'm going to go ahead and tape that. And then I'm going to add these sedum stems because I do want one of those kind of close to the middle. So I'm going to use those a little bit like a, a protea or something that you would stick kind of in the center as a little bit of a focal point. And then I'm going to wrap that one. And you don't have to use a lot of these. These are fairly large, so um, we're going to be kind of sparing with them. And I've got a little bit hanging down here, so anytime I have something below my tape line, like a leaf or another piece of a stem, I usually take that off because I don't really want that thickness uh, taped into my um, handle. We don't really have our complete shape yet. We're rounding this out slowly and, you know, just depends on where you add more pieces, you're going to round more toward that side. So if I add here, I'm going to make it bigger on this side. And slowly this is going to come down the more that I add. So I need to add a little bit of my silver dollar eucalyptus here. Because again, we want this to be light and fluffy, wispy, whatever you want to consider that. And the great thing again about uh, faux botanicals is if you don't like where it is, you can usually kind of move it around. If it's fresh, and I decide to move this rose, or I want to move this rose out here, I'm just going to snap the head off of it. And that's no fun, because nobody wants heads falling off of your bouquet as you're walking down the aisle. How do you decide what part of the eucalyptus, for example, you 
like where you want to cut it. Is there a formula for that or is it just depending on what your look you're going for? It is kind of dependent on what look you're going for, but for me, uh, especially in a bouquet, but most of the time, I decide to cut what gives me the most stem for each individual piece. So even if I may have to lose one of the leaves off of this, that still gives me enough to tape into my bouquet. As always, we tell you don't be afraid to cut things up, take pieces off. It may seem weird that you're pulling this piece off, but if that's what needs to happen to make it look better, go for it. Pull it apart. Pull it apart. And typically here at the store, we have a scrap box or two that... Or three or 87. Yeah, so that, that we work from, the designers work from, and you can go and find a scrap of just about anything that you need. So we are hoarders of the scraps. <laughs> we are. Because sometimes we just make up the scraps <laughs> for different types of arrangements, but they're they're good. It's still a good, yeah. a good piece. It's just maybe you didn't need this one piece and instead of throwing it away, you save it and put it in something else. We do save and reuse things many mm -hmm. times. So I'm gonna add some of our thistle in. I'm gonna try and get some of it on top of this plum hydrangea so that I'm hiding some of that because I don't want all the plum showing. I want mostly the pink showing. And I just want a little bit of that deeper color coming out from underneath it. And this makes me think of, a lot of you know our wedding story of how we got married in New York. We kind of eloped, but our family knew we were going, so it wasn't like a surprise. Right. But we did do that, and David made my bouquet, and we traveled and took it with us. Yeah. And it still looks great to this day. It's, my comfort. it's in a tote someplace, and it's all, I remember it being lots of bright colors, orange and fuchsia. Yeah, and, I think that was more in style. It was. We're in the, in the early in the dry thousands. flower phase right now. We're, Everybody's painted their house white and grays and, and just very boho, uh, shabby chic kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's very popular and prevalent. So uh, we're kind of doing these muted colors. This has a little bit of color, but it also has a lot of gray wash on it, or it's a little toned down. It's not quite as bright as it could be. And some, something I've seen you do before, too, is that you've made a fresh flower bouquet like this, but then you've made what we call a forever bouquet out of our permanent botanicals so that the bride can keep it as a sentiment of the wedding, right. remembering the day. And sometimes the bride will use these in home decor, if you mm -hmm. like your wedding picture and you get a vase or something to put your bouquet in and it works. We tell them, you know, when they when they do some of these things, if they get it from us, you know, bring it back. We'll pull it apart. We'll make it a wreath for your house. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll make something out of it if you want it for uh, for sentimental reasons to keep longer. Yes, and one of the reasons I love the uh, artificial or permanent botanical flowers is because I'm not allergic to them most of the time. Yeah, Jim has some allergies. Oh, especially, I love lilies. They're so pretty, but what do you call, which, which are the kind? It's making my head itch just thinking about them. What are the kind that I'm so allergic to? Uh, any of the Asiatic Yeah, Asiatic lilies, lilies. You're pretty much allergic to. They get me. Tiger lilies. Casablanca lilies. It's sad. Most they're any so lilies, pretty. Actually. But I can, I can have tiger lilies outside. Of my house and they're fine i just can't have them indoor in an enclosed space right sadly. so i'm still working this all the way around and it's starting to take a little bit more shape um but i still wanted a little lighter a little wispier so i'm going to cut some longer pieces of my eucalyptus down here and at this point, I really want something kind of in the middle. So you can really just go down through. Hydrangeas work great to hold everything in place. And then as my stem comes down, you know, I can tape it in where I want it. 
So as you can see, if I go directly through my hydrangea here, it's really gonna hold that in place. That's why a lot of people like to use hydrangeas as a base for a bouquet. So I've got a majority of the shape that I want going on. I did wanna add some of this French blue color into my bouquet. And one of the pieces that I took off of the stem was a little too short. So I'm gonna take a stem that I cut off of something else I'm going to add to this stem that was far too short for me to have anything to take to, and I'm just going to extend that. And it won't matter that this part's green, this part's brown, and this part's brown, because that middle part is going to go into the bouquet, and you'll never see it. On some of these pieces, like for this one in particular, I have a little more than enough. It's going to cluster kind of weird if I do all of that together. So I'm going to take this piece off. And then so that I have some of this color in the center, this is probably my longest piece off of this stem. I'm going to use that and go into the center and then tape again. And we just keep adding. next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my stems here down a little bit more appropriate size. And you'll notice that you can kind of see some of the stem underneath the bouquet. So usually what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll take some of the eucalyptus, something like that, asparagus fern, uh, something in that, that realm, and I will tuck it a little bit lower underneath just to hide those stems and then I'll add that. Now that I have successfully hidden most of the stems where you can see where they went into my floral tape, uh, because these are artificial stems, I will take and cut some of the small wires out, anything that's sticking out that's very easily seen, uh, because those can kind of stick through the ribbon sometimes. And we're ready to finish our handle up. So I'm just going to take some of this faux dupiani and this little bit of an ivory color. And we're going to wrap the handle. You can braid the handle. You can do all kinds of things to the handle. But for this moment, we're going to wrap. And so what I usually do is I take a little bit of glue and I glue one end of the ribbon that I just put on there so that this holds at the top. And then I'll just twist until I get down at least past my floral tape. I usually only leave a few inches of the ribbon showing or above the uh, line of the stems because I want them to look like they're fresh and a lot of times in fresh flowers we'll leave the stems showing so that we can put them down in water. The other thing I'll do is I usually tuck that ribbon behind itself so you don't have any frayed ends. And then I'll just take a few pins and slide that along with the stem so that that end stays in very well. Don't want that coming loose. Because the only part that's really harder 
than uh, with fresh flowers because the plastic stems are a little harder to get your pins in than fresh flowers are. <laughs> okay, so once I've got that finished, uh, sometimes I'll go back and add my hydrangea leaves or, you know, I'll add a little extra foliage just to the top. Anywhere where I feel like I need to add some extra, I can add some more eucalyptus. But that's pretty much the gist. Your bouquet. Thank you. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> now what do we do? <laughs> A PDA. <laughs> A PDA. I think it's okay. <laughs> We've been married long enough, right? We have. So, I hope you didn't notice my coffee breath. <laughs> I didn't mean it before. I have protein bar breath, so. <laughs> well, this is very pretty. I like this a lot. And you could make your own version of this and make it smaller for you prom mm -hmm. or for bridesmaids. For brides. You want to do a bride's Some brides maid. don't want something this large, but big is very in right now with brides, I will say. They like big. Flashy. If you liked our video today, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss the next video because it will be coming up sooner than we can. And buy some things from the website so that our kids can eat. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> or the app. Use our app. You can use the app. Yeah, it's great. I use it all the time. So our kids can eat. Thank you.